This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we're here to work on an ice machine. This thing's huge. I mean, look at this. This thing is huge. So, what we got here, so we're gonna take a look at it and see what we got going on, but it doesn't look like we have any ice. Imagine that, right? I've seen under the under the bar area style, but I haven't seen this one before. This is kind of interesting. I ain't quite seen this before. It's very interesting. So yeah, but from what I see, it looks like it sprays it up there to the top. A little dirty. Uh -oh. I think she just needs a good cleaning. From what I see, it looks like we can take this apart here and over here, kind of have at it. it feels kind of cold. I don't know if it's a refrigeration issue, a dirty issue, or what exactly. But we're gonna figure it out. Looks like the air filter's on the side here. I haven't worked on this. First, I thought it was a Manitowoc, but it's a Hajisaki. Not horrible, definitely dirty. You can tell we're in a factory location. Clean that up. Looks to me like this comes off. Nothing pops up here. I figure we've got to take it apart at the back and then everything should start coming apart. It's uh, traditional plates, which I'm figuring they're probably coming apart. That's probably some of it. Might be low on charge and have uh, plates that are separating from the refrigerant lines. So let's see what we find inside here. All right, so there is two screws back here. Take that off, and do we go. Pretty much the same design as usual. Looks like you unhook on one side and lift it up and out on the other. Let's see, Let's slide that out. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh yeah, that's not a problem. Nope, not a problem at all, huh? Yeah, well, there's your issue. If the cold is on the center there, what do you expect? It's not gonna transfer. Not gonna transfer. Now it can work, but my gosh. Look at that, all the way to the bottom. What's up guys? So we're going up here to a problem with a cooler call. It's after hours, we're gonna see what's going on, so. Hop in, let's go, see if we can find a place to park. All right, so this thing's brand new. We're real close to it. So let's see if uh, thermostat's calling here. see what's going on all right so we found the condenser it's up here all looking good nice and fancy well anyhow it wasn't one to run so we came down here and we checked our clock we went from in to line we got 218 volts not bad but you come up here and you look at the clock you look at your timing motor oops a daisy 120 volts so the clock took a dump and it worked for quite a while it sounds like for at least a month maybe so i marked it right there on that uh, copper spot there and it hasn't changed yet so we're going to go ahead and kill this thing hopefully this little 
fancy disconnect there actually kills everything. And we will swap this thing out. No, look at that. Somebody really wired this up like grand diggity. So my damn clock is wired hot, even when you kill the disconnect box. Ain't that bright? Brilliant. Guys, this is why you gotta be very, very careful. I, this right here, I don't know who the heck wired it up, but they just wired it wrong. And that is bull crap because that leaves it dangerous to one of us. And that's why you can't trust anybody. Always double check wiring. So, yep, I gotta fix that. All right, so I had to go kill the breaker because like I said, he had this wired up live. Um, we've got our power coming in here and now I've corrected it. So it comes into the top of the disconnect, comes out of the disconnect. So now when you kill it, it'll actually not shock the crap out of you. Two of the power wire feeds here go down to the unit, to the compressor contactor. The other two come down, come across and come up here to one and in, which is our clock at 230 volts. Now this lighter gauge wire here is control wiring. They are grabbing one leg of power here and the other power leg off of two. Two is gonna close when this thing is running in a call for cooling or you know refrigeration. The other one's just picked up the other leg because it's a 230 volt coil, or at least I hope it's wired for 230 volt. Maybe I should check that too. A lot of times we use 230 volt coils. Does it say? But one thing nice is, not that it makes it any better. Yeah, this is a multi-voltage one, I think. Yeah, it is. I need to check and see what the voltage is, make sure it's right, I don't wanna come back later. So for 230 volts, you've got to stick yellow to red. So there's yellow to red. The other two go to the power, so it is wired for 230 volts. I think our guys did this part here, but the high voltage part was done by an outside contractor. I'm going to assume that our electricians were too busy and couldn't get to it. So at least it wasn't our guys. However, we didn't catch it. So either way, here I am. So we've got that there. Everything's corrected. We're gonna go ahead and get these covers back on. Sight glass is full and I gotta finish changing out this clock. We're just gonna do wire for wire. Clock just comes out like this. Not a big deal. You can kind of see the clock ran really hot. It's pretty baked. And uh, it's just a timed off defrost. So it literally just breaks the coil to the solenoid. And for about an hour, it will just sit there and run the fans downstairs. Simple as that. So look at that. Let's run a ground wire and not terminate it up here. Now, at least they terminated it there, and in theory, it goes to the conduit, but it's like, why would you run the, I mean, whatever. I mean, there's really no place to ground it. Oh well, yeah, right here you go. So, whatever. <laughs> and people are worried about us wiring things up as electricians. Okay. So we just go ahead and get this thing up here. Hook your edge corners over there. And if you can kind of see in the dark, you are good to go. There we go. Just like Bisquick. Good deal. So, there we go. So we just gotta hook those back up. So Shazam, it's back in. So what I usually do is, if I'm gonna use these kind of wires, which I usually like crimp speed terminals, but strip off about that much, crimp over how much you want to overhang, move it over, stick it underneath there, and Shazam, you've got a ground wire hooked up. If you're gonna run it, you need to hook it. And uh, let's go ahead and set the clock. It's six something. And should be good there. I got that broke, get that cover back on. Then we go downstairs to the dungeon area. And uh, yeah, that's not gonna fit real good, is it? No, not really. We'll make it work. It'll be all right. And then uh, get that back together because that's live. It's 120 volts there. All right, got her back on there. Let's go get the power on and Shazam, we should have ignition. All right, so we're back. Look at that, gin and juice, baby. Let that run for a little bit. Make certain that this clock tracks the other clock. Like I said, just got a little bit warmer. 
So unfortunately, that's about it. If you guys, new guys, you haven't seen clock, it really ain't much to it. You got it normally open, you got it normally closed. On the front side, they tie them together. If you want, you can literally run two circuits. So between here to here is your uh, normally closed. This can be your normally open. And depending on when the clock goes and defrost, it switches them around. X is termination, which comes up to the solenoid. That triggers and terminates defrost early. Usually use that in a freezer. And in, all it does is power the clock. So that comes up here to the clock. And then uh, that's about all there is to it. So pretty, pretty simple thing, got a lot of gearing in there. These things are heavy duty, they don't go bad usually that much. They're usually murdered like this. Uh, I think 40 amps of current is what that's capable of on the uh, contacts, points, at least I think that's what the box said. But yeah, definitely a warranty issue, I'm sure. So we'll see if we can't get that right. I'm sure they won't notice that. <laughs> oh. Got that in there. Yeah, I got a three phase disconnect there, but uh, it's all only single phase. There we go. And give this a little mark here. Make sure it's tracking. Come down here and double check our side glass again. Which looks like me. We are full. And we are dry. Uh, this had the headmaster, so it will get cold up here, I'm sure. Uh, there's no heat up here. Uh, this is the same location as that uh, startup I did on the makeup air unit. So, yep, cooler, brand new cooler, right down there. And then uh, they did uni strut. I mean, our guys did a really nice job. I mean, they got it level, even though nobody can see anything. You can get in there and work on it. We're good to go. They marked in there exactly what the poundages and what the refrigerant so our guys did the job right but unfortunately the electricians they made a mistake it happens uh, the biggest thing is you come out you take care of it and uh, customer was right there with me there's no way to get around it just told him hey we made a mistake no big deal didn't hurt your equipment we'll replace the clock warranty move on you know they ain't got time to bring up all this other stuff because that just you know creates doubt in your customer so that's about it for this one guys we're gonna go ahead and bounce out of here and hope we don't get nothing else all right what's up guys we are working on this beautiful pepsi cooler here that's not cooling looks like we got a broken seal in between here which is why we got this funky frost stuff going on there so the problem is it's not cool like it's supposed to and it's definitely not cool fans running Compressor sounds like it's running, so let's find out if it's low on refrigerant or what exactly is going on, or maybe it's got a plug cap tube. Let's let's investigate here. So we've got the cover off, and just like any time, I always say use your ears and everything else that's going on around you, and you can hear the compressor dim down and not start. So we're going to start with the start components. Go ahead and get this thing unplugged. There we go, or we just flip the switch. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it, that way we know we're safe. I got that switch right there as you're trying to unplug it, you're flipping the switch back on, which is less than desirable. So let's get them pulled out of there. That way we can get this thing pulled out. All right, so it looks like we can get to some of the start components there. Let's see if we can get this out a little further. They love to put everything right in the way. There we go. Yeah, compressor is definitely warm. It's really hot. Look at that. That don't look good. Let's see if we can get this thing out of here. Should have a bleed resistor on it. Nope. No bleed resistor. Can see some liquid it looks like down in there, which might be the 
Not good. We're going to short that even though you're not supposed to short a uh, start capacitor. I'm not getting shocked. Yep. I'm supposed to bleed it down, but I'm not, uh, I don't carry the resistor thing around with me in my pocket. So let's get that out of there. So we've got one lead undone. Going to it, and we've got 116, 103. 103 area, and this is probably rated for 89. No, it looks like it's rated for 161 to 193. Yep, it's looking a little weak. Yeah, that uh, leaking juice down there probably is not doing it no good. Let's check it one more time here. Yeah, it's definitely weak. Let's take a look at that start uh, relay, see if it's toasty too. A little no room in there. It rattles like it's loose. Let's go ahead and just grab a new capacitor and see if we can make it go, but a lot of times I'll just order all new start components. That way you're just good and good, good to go. Get a new relay the whole nine yards. I'll just grab that. We'll wire the thing up real quick. If that don't work, then we'll order all the stuff for it. Usually I get my part numbers based off the compressor there. I don't order it from the factory because that's just a waste. That looks a little suspicious. All right, let's go grab a capacitor. We've got a collection of different capacitors. And we've got a Mars capacitor here that'll work just fine. 161 to 193. Should be an exact match. Of course, it's physically bigger, so it's not gonna fit where I need it at. We need to take some wires in with us. That way we can mount it vertically with a wire tie or something because they never seem to have the exact same size. And then you order an OEM one, then they don't send you everything you need anyway, half the time. So let's uh, go in there and get that in there and I'll add a resistor to this also. That way it's always bled down for the next time it starts, less arcing and things like that. Part number for this thing is a 93106 or AR or ACR. Yeah, 93106. So. Just a simple resistor there with uh, speed terminals on it. Okay, let's wire this thing up here. I'll just do it rough for now and see what we get. There we go. Get that to there. That little multi plug right there. I believe it's usually the lights. Let's see what we get here. Doesn't sound like it kicked on. So we may have a say, start component there, or it may just still be off on thermal. Let's see if we can put an amp clamp there on that. And we will see if it's pulling locked rotor. There we go. Nope. For how close that is to things. Yeah, it's still warm. Alright, well, we're gonna wait for a little bit here and see if it comes on. That thermal disc right there has got to cool down, so once it cools down with this fan blowing right on it, it should hopefully kick on here in a second. I got looking at that relay and I don't believe I got both prongs into it, so I repositioned it. Let's try it one more time here. Flip the switch. See if it comes on. There we go. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm up to 42 amps and did not want to stop. So let's go grab the Annie and uh, try it and see what we get there. Maybe that start relay is not removing itself from the circuit. Shaking it's not always the, you know, tried and true test. We could check resistance through it, but it's just easier to hook Annie up to it, make sure that it freaking works and. If it works, boom, order new start components are done. I've done a video on Annie here, which is model A12. 
it's got everything built into it. I did fry my own meter by accident, but this thing can check capacitors, all that stuff, way back before we had fancy digital meters. So it can do forward and reverse by switching the start relays. Let's just try to get the compressor broke loose. So what we're gonna do, I went ahead and used my meter. My highest resistance is going to be my start and run. Common then is in between. Found out what my start is by the second highest. And then that was going to be the one to the left, the red. The red one goes there, black one goes on top. And the white one's gonna go on the other one. Got her plugged in there. What we're gonna do is just steal power from the plug right here. And we'll flip it on. Now when we do this, the condenser fan's not gonna run. We can put our amp meter on here. The amp meter, uh, I think it still works on this, but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyhow, just as a precaution there. We got it on high. So we're gonna go with the 160. It's a 200 range. We're gonna push in our start, which is gonna energize our start relay. And then when I flip it on, I'm going to release it after a couple seconds and that's gonna take it out. So here we go. Yeah, she's pulling 42 amps. So we can try it again. Yeah, she's not getting it. We could try and reverse. That didn't do much. Yeah, this compressor's toasty. We could try breaking it loose, but even if I can break it loose, let's go ahead and jump to the next higher value for the capacitor there. It's probably not gonna help much. Let's go in reverse. Started to run a little bit, so it did go in reverse. Let's go forward now. Yeah, she's pulling 40 some amps. Compressor's toast. So nice thing about that is these capacitors in here are a lot bigger than those little uh, little hard start kits, you know, which I like for times when we don't have the hard start and it's critically needed. Like this one here is not humongo deal. It's just for extra condiments and overflows, but this compressor has bearing issues most likely. It uh, turns, but it doesn't want to go. My start and run windings all seem to be about traditional. Uh, I think it was 12 and a half, 13 ohms. And then I think a couple ohms for start or a couple ohms for run. So yeah, anyhow, this one's uh, gonna be toastomatic. I don't know if they're gonna wanna sink the money into a compressor. I don't really know if it's worth it. So anyhow, um, they own it now, I guess. So it's no longer belongs to Pepsi. But uh, that's gonna wrap this one up guys. On to the next one.